In this video, I'm gonna talk about three simple steps that your emails need to take so that you can use email to sell more. Email can be kind of confusing, and if you're not sure what to write about or if you're not sure how to craft the email properly, you end up wasting an opportunity to connect with a potential client and sell product. So in this video, it's gonna be a very concise and simple way to approach email so that you're able to sell more and get way more return on investment for, from the email list that you've built up. Hi there, my name is Brandon Brashears and I create daily marketing videos here. So if you're looking to grow your brand or your business with digital marketing, I really suggest that you subscribe here. I do everything from Facebook ads to pay-per-click to SEO to basically every topic related to digital marketing. So if you're looking to grow your business with digital marketing, be sure to hit that subscribe button and bells for notifications. And if you enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment below and let me know what you think. So let's talk about email marketing. Email marketing so often, and I work with lots of clients and they have a hard time figuring out exactly how to use email to sell. And it's actually very, very simple. So typically when we're starting to send out an email, we need to first have one overarching um, goal that we're trying to achieve. So sending out email for just for the sake of sending out email is not helpful. And so th there's a few things. People ask, well, how often should I be sending emails? And how often should I keep in touch? And all kinds of other questions like that and they get really complicated but it's actually pretty simple so first i suggest as a rule for almost every business out there that you're sending an email once a week if you can now i say if you can because um hopefully you're creating content and doing other things like that but if you're not sure what to sell then sell engagement right we typically have three levels of a funnel so typically an email will be a targeting whatever you know stage of the funnel or the segment that you're that you're trying to reach. And with that, you need to have an appropriate goal. So for example, if you have somebody who signs up for your newsletter, it may not be the right time to send an offer that's, hey, sign up for my highest level coaching program. So depending on the relationship that you have with the segment and um, kind of what your end goal is, you're gonna have to really figure out what is the best objective based on the funnel stage that we have right now. A lot of times um, people don't segment their email lists and so as a result, they're just sending to everybody, their best customers and people that are brand new in their funnel. So make sure that you're segmenting your list because it's very, very important to be communicating properly with different groups of your list. Now, if you have a list, list that's just awareness, it's good to send people to awareness content to drive them further into your funnel and to build a better relationship with them. So for example, with that kind of an email, you could send them to additional videos, to Facebook pages, to Instagram profiles, ask them to connect and take the further step in your relationship, and it'll help you to build and diversify your traffic as well. So then they're going to be able to see offers there. If, if it's evaluation, a lot of times it's good to start with a medium range or small range product. So if they know about you, maybe they've been on a webinar, um, sending them offers and things like that is, is a great way to engage them. And then if they are current customers and they know you know your best kind of customers that you have, send them higher priced ticket offers and get them to buy more from you. Because when you can get someone to buy more, their average lifetime value goes up. And if you're able to increase the average lifetime value of a client, then you can spend more to acquire customers, which is great. I actually created a video if you click on this card up here to check that out. But with the email, figuring out what that end objective is first is most important. And there's really only three steps after you figure out what the objective is to get people to take action. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to get the email open. There's really four types of emails that I like to send out and I use them over and over in different variations. I don't t tend to send these every single time though because people will start to get worn out from them. So the first uh, type of email is a blind curiosity and this is like the BuzzFeed clickbait article, right? You'll never believe what we're up to this week or um, I couldn't believe that he actually did this or you know something like that, right? You're like, what could it be? And it makes you wanna open it and see what the, the rest of the story is. People wanna be included in the story. And so having a headline like that is um, helps to get opens. The next is direct benefit. So if you wanna say something like, this will clean your carpets better than anything you ever used, right? We're using a little bit of curiosity, but we're also giving a direct benefit. People will say, hey, I have dirty carpet. I need to clean my carpets. Awesome, I'm gonna open this email. The, the next one is uh, urgency or scarcity. 
So if you have a product that is, you truly have urgency or scarcity, maybe you have a special, you could say this offer ends tomorrow at midnight and people will say, oh man, I don't want to miss out and they'll open your email. And then the last one that I like to use a lot is proof or specific results. And with that, I say like, um, you know, let's say you have a business opportunity or something, right? He made $5,212 in six minutes. It's really specific and it's results. And so people that are interested in making money would be interested in opening that email. So again, op getting the open of the email is the very first step. If people don't open your email, they're not going to be able to read what's inside of it. And that brings us to step two. So step two is to get them to read what's inside and then click. So doing both of those things, there's a few things that I like to do to increase the clicks on the emails. Number one is I like to use a variety of links inside of it. Now it's important that you don't put only links in there because you can get um, flagged for spam, but typically I'll do a variety of both buttons and also text links that say, you know, click here. So instead of having a button, it'll say the actual word. I like to be testing those just to see what the audience clicks more. And um, it's good to have both visual callouts that are that are buttons that are different from everything so people can see. But in general, people are viewing emails on their mobile phones a lot more than they are on desktop. And so if you create an email, it needs to be very easy to read on mobile and the button needs to be there. That's easy to click. But again, the whole purpose of the email is to sell the click to take the next action. So figuring out just that one specific action that you're looking for them to take and then selling that click is, is very, very important and it'll help you to get more traffic to your, your web page. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule. I think that if you're trying to get somebody to respond to you, um, having them like write, write back and respond is actually a good tactic a lot of times um, if you have the ability to respond back to people. So asking them to use email like a medium that they use it with their friends and family, that's a cool thing. So if you're not going for the click, ask for the reply. So in general, you, you don't need to sell everything once they're on the page. So the, the email body that you're writing and creating, all that you're trying to do is to sell the click to the landing page. You don't need to do too much. You can again use the four elements that I spoke of in the email headlines on how to get people over to your, your web page. Um, so it's the curiosity, direct benefits, urgency or scarcity, and then proof and results. So you can use all of those elements to drive people to your landing page as well. And then once they're at the landing page, they've made a decision, right? So they've already done an open, they've done a click, and now they're at the landing page. Let the landing page do the sell. And you can use tools like videos and a lot more long form content. And there you can really do the heavy lifting of selling um, and have all of the elements that help to make an effective sales page or landing page. And really at that point, it's, it's time to take you know, that, that use the additional tools that you have inside of a web page instead of trying to do everything inside of the email. So one thing though, is that emails that are boring never get opened. And if they do get opened, they end up actually harming your brand. So make sure that you're not selling, sending boring emails, but also don't be too hypey or clickbaity that you're not actually providing what you're talking about. So it's a very, very um, fine balance. I'd say being useful, being educational, being entertaining are sure ways to get your emails opened and to have people trained to use your email. So I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions or need help with email, please comment below. I'm happy to help. And if you enjoyed this video, like the, like the video. And please, if you enjoy digital marketing or if you want to grow your business with digital marketing, consider subscribing. I again make daily marketing videos here and I run a digital marketing agency. So have a great day and I'll see you on the next video. Have a good one.